The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. This is Daddy Poo. You're listening to the Network Cast of Kong. Booyah! I am calling heaven. I'm in your eye. Hey, you know what? I should get a job in a fucking Motley Crew on one on tour with them. I'm just as fat as Vince Neil. So yeah, I but got, you do I some. Got, I got you, some better, body. you sound better impersonating him than he does in real life. Oh, wait, you can't see that because of my background. Yeah. yeah, I got Vince Neil body. I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I sing like him. You know. And you can wear a hat with a wig. Oh, oh, I got a hat right here. Star Wars week, right? Yeah. 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 But you need the hair. Oh, I need, you need the, the hair. hair. Yeah. It's the hair. Oh, I got the hair here. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Well, it, it counts. That but it's counts. not wrong. I remember the fucking words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to call me I don't know. Sorry, guys. I gotta go. Love you. call Tommy Dr. Feelgood. 13 songs and he bails on the show. 13 songs and he bails. Ugh. Welcome to chapter 339 of the Necrocasticon. We blend horror and heavy metal for your pleasure and ours. We are Methuselah old. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're missing a few members this week. Walter uh, has uh, got um, things to do with his work, and uh, Dan is finally moving back into his studio, which means the studio is not set up yet. Uh, and since we kind of do video stuff now, he wants to you know, make sure his studio is ready. Say hi to all our friends over at Godless. Hello, Godless. What a Godless. We are too. Sponsor here over Probably. at the Necrocast uh, alongside of Project Entertainment Network. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. And, and we have been honored to be a part of for years and years. Yeah. And our guest this week is going to be Armand Rosamelia and Jay Wilburn. Um, two of the powerhouses. That's be great. Uh, be a lot of fun. Yeah, that we know. Big Daddy is on the show. Yeah, Big Daddy of Project Entertainment Network. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, uh, um, Don Mondo. This is Ring. Don <laughs> Mondo. Ring. Don Mondo. Don Mondo. Leave the gun. Get the cannolis. Yes. But you know what's funny? He is the sweetest guy. He is. He's yeah. always we're gonna, we're gonna talk, we talked to him before. We're going to talk to him again tonight. And uh, yep. we'll be calling him in uh, right now. Does this, make, does, this make him our, does this make him our most reoccurring guest? One of them. <laughs> One of them? Okay. One of it's the up. things about this is that... Lucas uh, Miller. Is that... Um, Armand is, um, how can I put it? Oh, man, I, I hate ADD. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, nobody's died. Steel, we He's not coming out for a eulogy episode. That's what uh, it is. Yeah. You know? That's a good so, point. Yeah, it's not a eulogy episode. All right. Yeah, that was his uh, his claim to fame around here. <laughs> Somebody died. Oh, call him Get Armand. Armand. <laughs> yeah, somebody's died. We called Armand. <laughs> so we're hoping that nobody dies me. tonight. What's up, guys? has died today. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Hey, Armand. What's going on, oh, guys? He's showing off some of the Funko Bops. We're, we're of course, just making fun of you, buddy. Funko Bops. Awesome. We're not making fun of Armand. Armand, we're in a couple months, I'm not going to be able to do three Funko Bops. Three of them. Cthulhu eats Funko you know, you, Bops. You guys oh, making no. fun of me, that really, coming from you guys, that really hurts. Uh, <laughs> I really I really value all of your opinions. <laughs> we weren't making fun of you at all. Skip Come just on, talk. Armand. We, you and I shared, like, Five intimate moments at scares. Was it five? We did it twice. Yes. Three times. Three, three times. Three, that, that's three about times. five. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yes. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. So. Hey, Jay Wilburn. Hey, what's up? What's up, Jay? Jay's not showing sure his face tonight for some reason. <laughs> Jay's got the best setup of all of us combined. I know, and he doesn't want to show his face. There's the thing. He doesn't realize that we're recording video as well. Right, yeah. Man behind the screen. Can you guys not see my video? Nope. No, we can't. Oh, I got it on. Hold on. I don't really? see any sure. of you guys sure. either. <laughs> you positive. That's why he's there's using something the, he's using, going on here, see? He's, he's using, using the, the best John Cena. down Skype. I can't Keep see. <laughs> you know, this isn't Twitch, that's why. This is slumming it for him. Yeah, so. I know. That's, that's good God. Yeah, I know. I've thought about using Twitch or something like that, but right. I don't know about these bits and... Rating oh, yeah. people subscribers. There he stuff. is. There okay. We got. I had it on. I guess it didn't click through yet. I'm nice. loving you. You're growing your hair out there, Luke Skywalker. I know. I I made a logo with long hair. Now I got to keep it. 
Yeah. So, you got to grow the chin hair life. back, though, too, to have the whole package going, man. It's not, it's not in the logo. Yeah, Jay, Jay, if you never ever need an implant, I have plenty. <laughs> or I can give you a transplant for my back, whatever works. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Scott. I'll, Scott, I'll keep Scott, you on speed dial. I, I can spread around all you guys. I'd be all hooked up. That was much hair as me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Scott's back hair is curly, so it will give you that nice, fresh, younger, but lush 1975s so look. Diet. <laughs> so, uh, Room 138 is the new book that you guys have put out together. Um, I, I, I think I described it as if, uh, what if uh, Christopher Nolan wrote for Rod Serling on the Twilight Zone? Because that's what it I'll is. Take, it's a, I'll it's take a, that. Yeah, it's a time travel. Uh, um, uh, mind fuck book. <laughs> That's the way I look at it, you know. Considering the two gentlemen we have, I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with the idea for that one? That was Armand. That was me. Me and Jay go back and forth with ideas, so okay. it's it's uh, whoever's turn it is, and we pitch the other person two or three ideas, and uh, I pitch them a couple. And uh, the first one, he just rolled his eyes at, so I, I just ignored that one. And when I, I pitched this one to him, he's like, all right, maybe we could work with that one. And then usually once we start kind of throwing a couple of ideas back and forth, then we both get excited. But we never really taught. We, it's basically the elevator pitch, and, like, I'll give him the, the opening. Basically, hey, this guy, uh, you know, uh, basically goes into, has to find room 138 in a different town following clues. And then he can basically what became porting to another time, right? To another year in another room 138, and and he's looking for clues, and he has no idea who he is or why he's doing this. And that was literally the pitch. And Jay's like, "All right, let's let's go with that one." So <laughs> and, right, I wrote and, the... and, and, Scott, is that not a Christopher Nolan meets Rod Serling fucking story? Pitch I'd say there? so. And, my, and the question I have is 138. Any reference to the Misfits? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. That was. That was worst thing I thought of. <laughs> yep, exactly. A lot of people are like, "Oh, do you know that's a Misfits song?" Yeah, no shit, I know it's a Misfits. Shit, song. Dude. Everything I got it from, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Always trying to please the customer, Armand Rossamilia. Well, exactly. you know, Armand, you and I are similar in that we put a lot of music into our our, our fiction and our prose because um, it's part of our life. Right. And um, the books you got now, uh, the the death metal books that are coming out through Godless. I love that fucking cover. Holy shit. You know what? Shit. And uh, and what's funny is, uh, so I put out Tool, Tool Shed and I put out Death Metal. And Drew actually from Godless actually said, hey, can I can I do the covers? Because I had, you know, crappy covers on them. Uh, and I just kind of come up with a couple of ideas, you know, real quick. And I wasn't happy with them. And then uh, he was like, you know what? The Tommy disappeared. <laughs> there he, he is. That. It he, he, that. he poured it. He poured it. He, went he poured out the it. He, he, he poured it, and 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 there was a pipe and smoke involved. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Drew was like, let me let me like do all of your books if you're going to give me exclusives. Let me do all those books so they look similar and have the same feel. And I was like, yeah, if you're going to do you know you do covers for me for free, knock yourself out. And I I love them. I. I thought they were, uh, you know, that's a good price for me, Jay. You know that. Yeah, yeah. That, that speaks that's, to your soul. Yes. <laughs> Even if it was like a stick figure, I would have been like, free, yeah, right. yeah put that on the right. cover. That's awesome. Fine. Yep. Botulism and hepatitis in the same night. It's you free. Know, the fa free. Every book I've had come out, I've made my own covers for. I've, I've busted my ass doing and Then the last second, I buy a pro one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it, I suck. Me, <laughs> me, me, and, me and Jay, with all the books we've done together, we are both look really bad at like picking the cover or coming up with the ideas for it, right? Like, we, we like, yeah, they're like, I oh, come up with an idea, and we're like, oh, you do it this time. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather write the back cover blurb. Can I, than, can I be your guys' consultant for that? Because I'm really good with cover stuff like that. Call me. Text me. I've seen your I've seen your covers are awful. <laughs> <laughs> I love the You're number Even one, Armand. Even Come on, you set me up for that one. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh, uh, <laughs> such a sweetheart. Who to blame yourself. but you? <laughs> but but here's the thing. I mean, uh, we're talking about cover art, and I'm thinking of some of the classic cover art I've seen, like uh, Skeleton Crew, the hand and wrapped in mummy badges with the eyes. That's Night Shift. I'm sorry, Night Shift. My apologies. Um, you guys, uh, if someone had come to you with something a little obscure, but yet it references a story, would you go with it? 
Yeah, I, I can usually tell if I like a cover. I have no concept of what makes a good one, though. So, like, it, I usually have to just find an artist I trust and then go with them. So for a lot of my self-published stuff, I lean on Luke Spooner uh, because I know all his stuff is good. And he always wants feedback, but I'm like, oh, it's great. <laughs> we, we run with the cover. Because I, I couldn't tell him, like, like I'm going to tell Luke Spooner how to fix a cover. I, I don't have well, any idea. Just don't look. There were 100 applicants. You're number one. That speaks for itself. Well, a, a great example with you guys for that is Yard Full of Bones. The original cover on that, I saw what you guys were trying to do with the cover make it a a simplistic you know like almost like a uh a mondo type cover um but then you redid the cover to something a little more traditional um mm -hmm. in horror sense and I, as much as i like the other cover i think the, the new cover works just as well um we, and we it, were it is a little going, more traditional we were kind of going for that movie poster simple movie poster type cover that was the original pitch we got and of course mm -hmm. me and jerry were like yeah that's fine that that looks good and, <laughs> and we did it and then the um you know the publisher came back to us and said listen sales aren't great and let's maybe it's the cover let's change the cover so we were like yeah and they he pitches that which which i like i mean I, but i, I like oh, both covers right. I, you know the first cover was great when you're at a convention and it's on the table because people are like what is this they, they're not sure what it is, and then you give them the elevator pitch of what it's about. But with the other cover, it more fell in line with that horror, cosmic horror type of book. Skip has a well, question. Yeah, I was going to say, out of the two covers, um, which one sold more books in the same time period? I think the second one did better. Yeah. I think I think going traditional, because like Armand said, it's you got this weird thing where the cover that looks good on Amazon isn't necessarily the one that it gets people's most attention on the convention table. I don't know what the difference in mindset is. I don't know if it's, it may even at that point, it may be a texture thing or comparison to other covers. Right. Um, so I've always struggled with that. I don't, I don't know how to play that. Well, well, Jay on that, um, when you're at a convention, there's a lot more interaction with the mm -hmm. customer you're selling to versus an online kind of thing. Right. Right. And Armand, so, you're a fucking pro at that. I, I, it's a challenge. It's you know you turn on that's you you turn on the the mondo I call it, yeah, because I'm really normally just quiet and I I sit on the ca the table and my wife throws me up, and uh, plus I, mean, I usually sign with Jay and Jay just kind of sits behind the table which makes me look really good. So. Well, no, because I think a lot of it's your retail experience. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you have a, you, you have you the ability to talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. You you read somebody you 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 read somebody you know how to bullshit them into buying something that you've got to get rid of as a retail manager you know you'd have those items that i want to get rid of this garbage or whatever and it's just like oh hey oh this is great this is have you seen this it's been in the store for five years but it's brand new and you get you know you get rid of stuff i was very this good is... retail i was very good retail at uh hey if you push this item or this you know this department you you know that's that helps with your bonus all right yeah then i, I sell through the entire section you know mm -hmm. this, this is why is i learned really how to read good. serial numbers yeah serial Armand numbers is also really leads. good at um networking at conventions and pitching books so like that same sales technique he can mm -hmm. sit down with a publisher and have a book sold um before the day's over and that's always uh <laughs> it, it both makes me angry and i'm impressed by it yeah well, jay jay's referring to jay was trying to he was i was like you know what i'm sick of selling all these books to publishers why don't you do it so like six months later nothing and then we sit next to uh crossroad press at uh, at scares that care and i turned to jen i go oh by the way uh i just sold that book you know <laughs> but by, by the way the hidden truth will be a crossroad book you're welcome <laughs> I wish that wasn't true. So, okay. so, so, so what you're saying is, Jay is the yoke around your neck, dragging you into the Mariana <laughs> Trench, and yet Silent you still part. continue to write books with him. Thank God he can write. That's all I yeah. <laughs> secret, the secret partner of the secret I would have loved for you to have seen that time travel book if Armand was the one that had to fix the continuity in it. No, okay. that would have been a mind book. <laughs> That would have been no, Jay, 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 we're not saying you're stupid. <laughs> we're just saying I just do you, stupid things. <laughs> no, you, you, your 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 personal interactions is a little more stressed. Well, that that leads to my question then. Um, uh, tell us about the collaborative process you have for the book. 
Uh, well, typically, like you said, we, we alternate who pitches the idea. So if someone starts off with the idea. And when we first started, that person kind of led out. But pretty quickly, it just became, as soon as we started writing, it became both our books. So uh, I think part of our success is neither of us hold on very tight. So, you know, I may have an idea of where it's going, but as soon as Armand sends me a chapter and closes that door, that's not where it's going anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of authors can do that. And especially um, some of the more old school authors and then sometimes authors that um, have had a lot more success traditionally don't handle that as well, I've, I've kind of found. Um, and then we just, we kind of go back and forth with chapters and maybe about two thirds or three fourths of the way through, we'll usually kind of powwow one more time and say, okay, um, wh where do we think this is ending? And then we kind of work our way into that. And then, like I said, continuity is kind of my job. So I, I kind of keep the story Bible as we're going and then I'll go back through and like any threads that we put in there, I'll make sure they all tie together. And um, if we introduce something late in the book that uh, needs some more foundation, I'll add it in earlier and that kind of stuff. So um, we kind of find a middle voice between the two of us and then kind of smooth uh, the story out once we got the bones in place. I like it. That right. sounds good. You're like, so there, isn't, like that, there isn't that many like, dude, what the fuck moments. <laughs> <laughs> there's, well, been a, there's been a couple. Yeah. Not as many. But not but as many. Not yes. negative either. But like, yeah. I think part of what makes our books good is the fact that like both of us surprise each other. So we can always say when you're writing a book by yourself, well, I was surprised when such and such happened, but you weren't really. You made it up. But I'll get a chapter back from Armand and I'll legitimately be surprised. So as the author, I'm shocked. And so I think us doing that to each other back and forth really does make a book that surprises readers because the people writing it ended up being surprised too. So I, um, um, oh, I remember sorry, uh, the one opportunity I had to, to collaborate with you, Jay, on that summer of zombie story <laughs> and what you did to, uh, editing wise on the story that I gave you and how it improved it. Um, that was a pretty fun experience. Yeah. That uh, those tours were interesting. And then of course, like the one you're talking about, we, we had a new author do every chapter uh, so sometimes the edits were just as simple as making sure they match. I, I guess I was continuity guy again, um, but I didn't I didn't try to change anybody's um, style or anything because of course you have these wide range of styles. So those stories got nuts, yeah. um, and then I would end up writing the last chapter to try to tie it all together. And notice everybody tried to one up the guy before him too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to ask yeah. next. Was like in these collaborations, is there a lot of one upmanship? <laughs> I think we, you know, especially when I first started writing with Jay, there was a lot of stuff that I was like, holy shit, how am I going to, how am I going to write as well as he is? So you, you really up your level, you know, there's no, really, there's no bridge chapters. There's no, let me just get from A to B and yeah. we'll worry about it later. There was, let me write the best chapter that I can and send it to him and then see where he goes with it. And nine times out of 10, where I think the next chapter should go, he writes something completely different, but it's better. And that's, I think for me, that's what, you know, really uh, is exciting for, for us because we're writing all of these books. I mean, we've written four books together and we're writing, uh, we're doing a collaborative thing on Patreon right now. And all of it is, you know, for me, it's okay. What's Jay doing and where can I go with this? And it takes me a couple minutes to go, okay, where do I think he's going with this? And then what's the next level? And I, sure. and, and he does the same thing for me. And it just, it, it, it helps both of us become uh, best writers. Whenever anybody says, what's your, what's your best work? You know, I'll go to a convention, I'll have 40 books on the table and they say, what's your best work? And usually I'm pointing to the enemy held near, you know, or I'm, I'm pointing to yard full of bones. I mean, you know, those are my favorite books that I've ever written. And I've written a, a ton of books. He did that to me with Yard Full of Bones. So, I mean, that goes both ways, where he wrote the, the kind of prologue in the first chapter. And after I read that, I was like, oh, holy shit, I got to bring my A game to this. I can't, <laughs> I can't mail in this next chapter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin this book. So it's a good challenge. It's a, it's oh, yeah. a let's, let's, let's hold each other up. And, a good competitive. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, it's not okay, who's the best. It's how it. good can we be? Because we make it. That's the operative yes. word right there, the we factor. Right. Because like you said, this probably, this is a great lesson for any young writers out there to say that your ideas are not always the best. You got to bounce it off somebody else to get their feedback. 
And as you were just saying, it goes back and forth. Like, wow, he wrote this. I got to up my game now. And then he wrote that. Oh, geez. Wow. I got to, I got to do this now. Mm -hmm. Do you think there was ever a time where that would not work for you too? Like way back? Maybe early in our careers. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I've been reading Armand stuff for a while and I kind of backtracked to read, read some things. And so like, I feel like, and I don't even think I've ever said this to him, but uh, right around uh, Chelsea Avenue and Green River Blend was kind of where he really found his voice. And that's no disrespect to um, the Dying Days books, which I love too. Yeah. They're still great. And Armand always writes like Armand. But there was just some there was just some moment there, and I kind of now that I kind of have his books on my shelf in order, I can kind of see what came before and what came after. And so there's kind of a turning point there. And I think that was actually it, because when we talked about Enemy Held Near. Um, I remember saying to you, like, I want to do something like Chelsea Avenue, like right. that level yeah. of horror, and, because it was something I hadn't seen from him before. Um, and then I know for a fact, if you if you went far enough back in my career, I would still be figuring out what makes a story work and what doesn't. And so I, I don't think we could have done it back then. Um, one thing I noticed, too, that's about the same time that you decided to go as a full-time author, Armand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you They're know, I, go I, I was... Hand. I, yeah, I was blessed because when I started doing the uh, the movie tie-in stuff and all and all those, you know, I had like four editors on those on those books, uh, and a couple had no idea what they were doing, so they would throw random ideas. But the, a couple other ones were really just pounding me with <laughs> my prose and my plots and my I, you know the ideas and everything. Your voice. And I really learned it's a lot. Sounds like, yeah. yeah. Well, I had, I kind of had I had, like Jay said I kind of started to get my voice back then, but I was just as all new writers, and, and I say new writer, I've been doing this for 30 years, but you, you get to that point where, you know, sometimes you think, I don't know, the reader's an idiot, and you have to explain everything to them, or you're just not comfortable enough to just write that stripped-down story, and, and it took you, me a long time to get mode. to that. It's, mm -hmm. it's the yeah. fuck it mode. Yeah, yeah. It, everything is just fuck it. I'm just going to pour everything that I am, everything that I've experienced, and everything that I want to do <laughs> into this one thing. Yeah. You're well, then the you realize you know it saves some of this because I'm I want to write guilty as hell a like, books. with yeah. a lot of that because I tend to I can put a whole shit ton of information in a four thousand word story mm -hmm. so easily, mm -hmm. but you're right, spread it out. You know that's a frost, that's mm -hmm. a cake. Fro spread that frosting out on that cake. Use it. Use some of that for something else. You mm -hmm. know, capitalize off of it if it's good. You know, Jay. Your opinions? Um, I, I lost the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just about getting, getting more out of less. You know, more yeah. out of less. Yeah. Finding um, a to being able to, to, to focus it into a, a subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think short story writing has helped me with that the most. Uh, because even, even when I have a novel idea, I'll usually play with it in short stories for a long time. So if I'm planning to write time travel, I'll try different short stories with different rules and that kind of thing. And same thing with the type of horror. If I'm trying a new type of horror, I'll, I'll run it through short stories, uh, sort of a laboratory. And I think over time, uh, the, the ideas of like being brief and getting to the point and taking out the boring parts and starting the story in the right place and um, having the story be the right length, all those skills, uh, I think, um, expand up into novels and novellas as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, the short story is... the um... Does the intent change along the way of what the story is going to be? I mean, like I said at the beginning, if you're newer, you might be consciously trying to say, oh, this is going to really fuck with them. And then as time goes on, you write and write and write. And like, like Skip said, oh, fuck it. I'm going to do this. If they get screwed over, you know, if they get shocked by it, great. If not, I think it's good. Does, it, it, does the intent change, have you found, over the years? What do you think, Armand? You know, it, it's, it's really story to story for me when I write. You know, I know I have an idea. So if I have an idea in my head, at this point in my career, I can kind of go, okay, this is 10,000 words or this is 50,000 words. You know, it, it really just depends on where I want to go with it. Because I could take the same kernel of an idea, that what if, and make it a flash fiction piece or 100,000 words. And not saying it's just easy to do, but it, I have that mindset from having finished so many things, you know, finishing a story is just so important. I tell people that, you know, new writers all the time, just finish stuff. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. Get that experience of knowing 
you, you started and you, you middle end and you're done and you've moved on. So for me, it just really depends on the story. There's some there's some stuff that I go, you know what, I'm I'm gonna make this the craziest thing I could write. And there's a lot of times, especially now, where I'm I'm going, you know what, I'm writing crime thrillers, I'm writing adventure stories, I'm really not writing the horror stuff that I used to. And I, I'm I'm you know, you, you get kind of bored with writing the same stuff over and over. Yeah, you know, I did nine nine zombie books and a bunch of other books in that series, and I just said <laughs> I don't want to write another zombie story. Now I might get another idea down the line and then I'll write that story. But you know, I, I don't want to write it just to write it. Jay. Like writing for me is kind of constantly evolving. And some of that is being a full-time writer as well. I'm always trying to diversify my income sources. So if, if something new comes up, I try to see, okay, can I get in on this thing first and make something of it? And sometimes it sticks to the wall. Sometimes it doesn't. And even now, I've, I've been on Twitch doing live streaming and, like, writing short stories live. And that has changed everything, like, my entire mindset, my word counts, um, the types of stories I'm writing, the way I write. And uh, so I don't even know who I'm becoming at this point. Uh, but I just got through in May writing a, a new short story live on stream every day for the month of May. So I wrote 31 short stories That was in fucking a row. great, dude. I checked wow. those out. They were great. <laughs> And um, so, you know, people are coming on and asking me questions and talking to me while I'm writing and I'm speaking the story out loud while I'm writing it. Uh, so that's like that's uh, this whole alien concept from how writing's supposed to work. Uh, but it's become an income source for me now. So it's kind of like I don't know what phase this is. Like, I, I don't know what platform or what brand I'm on now, uh, but it's becoming something. I'm just not there yet. What's right. your Twitch channel? What's your Twitch channel? Jay Wilburn. Just under Twitch. Jay. It's great, dude. Yeah. J A Y W I L B U R N, Twitch TV slash J Wilburn. Pimp that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I've lurked a we couple need, times. Oh, we cool. Need more, we need more bees in this world. Yeah. Yeah, Twitch is kind of alien to me. I've tried it, tried to use it. You know, like sometimes I'll play uh, Magic or uh, right or Diablo you on it. Get your magic. <laughs> um, but that's about it. You know, I. I'm not, you know, my buddy Joe who has 11,000 subs and pays his rent with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, the he does music, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I follow him on there too. Yeah, Joel Tier, just Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I follow quite a few Twitch channels myself, and yeah, it's you got to find that niche. It's really hard, really difficult to do. If you got, yeah, you kind of weren't in the game. It's like YouTube. If you weren't in the game before it boomed, you're kind of really fighting an uphill battle. Jay, I just followed you by the way on Twitch. Oh, cool. And, um, <laughs> So I only follow two people. That's uh, <laughs> Scott and Tommy, but I'll add Jay to the mix. <laughs> and Herman, I want. So, I, so I, I, let me. I, I wanted to chance. ask you about that Twitch, though, Jay. Okay. What kind of challenges do you face putting yourself on the spot? Are you afraid of getting a writer's block strike midway through this? You would, writing, you would think so, doing? yeah. Um, I think it, I think it helped that I was doing podcasting like you guys do, and um, you know I've been doing interviews and stuff. So some of the sort of initial, just being on camera stuff. Had what happened to Tommy? Out. What happened to Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's it's, it's it, it is a steel. different thing. It it is really alien to how storytelling works. So the the idea that I'm you know I'm my gimmick is that I speak the story out loud as I'm typing it. Okay. Uh, okay. And I think ghostwriting helped a good bit, too, because I was having to put up fast word counts to get paid and all that kind of stuff. Um, this last month helped a lot because, I mean, anything you practice enough times, you get smooth at it. Have so any of the NDAs out. run out? Uh, Non-disclosures on ghostwriting? Yeah. No, they never run out, man. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Because you really because you've read Jay not. Wilburn. <laughs> you really read Jay Wilburn if you've never read Jay Wilburn. <laughs> yeah. You're either yeah. you're either James Patterson or or Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child. Okay, I, I'm sure of it. <laughs> That'd be good money. <laughs> That's why he's sitting in a two bedroom Cape Cod on Martha's <laughs> fucking finger. Oh no, he just ghost writes for them. That's what a ghostwriter does. Is he writes for. I I, I trust yeah. me, I know. Famous people. <laughs> they don't really like Alexander Dumas. He didn't write Three Musketeers. His students wrote it for him. He just told what them what his, to do. What about his father? What about Dumas' father? 
Are we doing the? You guys are doing the conspiracy podcast. You guys are on the wrong oh, podcast. Yeah, wrong that's show. Wrong conspiracy. show. It's, it's, <laughs> my right. father was a general with Napoleon. Okay. Okay. Sake. All right. Well, all right. Skip. That's good. That's great. I, I can go on. Uh, well, I'm, well, it's it's part of the. That's a ghostwriting thing. That's why I brought it up because Jay is a ghostwriter. Or, or or was I don't know what if yeah. he still is or not. That's why he's so pale. Not as, not as much anymore. That's why he's so pale. <laughs> I haven't left pale the house since the pandemic He's got three kids. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> You're not supposed to talk about medical issues. Hepa, Hepa, Hema, whatever the fuck it is. Speaking of that, yeah, it's uh, we're opening up these conventions. Scares that care. We're, you know, we're gonna do the mask thing there while we're there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. hand sanitizer Jay's table I'm assuming yeah I, okay. I've been playing it safe at conventions for a while so even before the pandemic after being transplanted I was doing hand sanitizer I, um, yeah, all those type of things the, yeah. the, fun, the funny thing is I, I got sick less often after transplant than before when I went to conventions I used to always come away with convention crud uh, but even with my immune system lower, like being particular about washing hands and sanitizer and all that, I didn't get sick anymore. Uh, right. So I guess if I just held up that um, that level of sanitation, I would have been fine. Uh, in terms of scares this year, like if it were a month earlier, I probably wouldn't go. Right. Uh, so I think yeah. like that July, August mark is kind of right on the line. I've been vaccinated. Um, the convention's taken it seriously, uh, right. which and I appreciate. SARS viruses tend not to germinate as quickly in high temperatures. And, right. and Jay, I live in Virginia here. for Christ's sake. I literally live an hour away from Williamsburg. Right. We're we're good. Now, Armand, are you concerned when you go to a convention like this, and you have to wear your mask, that you look like a slasher killer? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no problem wearing my mask. I enjoy it, but the uh, the couple of signings that I've done have been outdoor events mm-hmm. down here in Florida. So you know. Everywhere you go, you're wearing your mask. When I get there, I'm doing the setup. I'm wearing my mask. And then I, I've been sitting behind the table, which is kind of weird for me because, you know, I like to get up and walk around and stuff. So I've been basically behind the table and, uh, you know, not not doing the handshake, which is awkward when somebody reaches over the table to shake your hand. And I give them, like, hey, this weird wave. Right. And, hey, you know, or or, whatever. Or, or I'll do, like, the, uh, the last thing i did i did like uh like the the queen i made sure i had something a, a bottle in my hand at all times oh. and so when they did the hand i was like oh hey and i would give them like the a bump or something but most people are most people are cool most people are coming to the table they have a mask on uh you know when i'm signing stuff i'm kind of sliding it over the table so um you know I, i'll get back to conventions i'll get back to i decided to skip scares this year uh, I'm sad. I'm gonna miss you. Man. I'll I'll definitely go. I'll definitely go next year, and I'll definitely once everything is more open up. And it's it's funny because I'm getting a bunch of invites for conventions. It, it, uh, what's funny this is year, I'm, and it's I'm, like I'm, yeah. On my list here, Armand, that you and I are supposed to meet up at 1:02 a.m. on August 1st. <laughs> but if you came into my minutes for five minutes. If you came into my room, dude, I'm sleeping. Then I'm old. <laughs> so, Jay, what I'll do to make us feel like Armand's that scares this year is uh, I will uh, wear a Red Sox hat um, and and <laughs> and walk by your booth uh, occasionally. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tommy, make fun of all the people around, around too. That's hat. one of Armand's favorite things at conventions. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You are all mine, Fada. <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys have next that you're thinking about working on together? Who's who's pitched the next story? Jay. Uh, yeah, right now, it. we're doing a, a story called Split Between, and it's on both our Patreon pages. So, uh, we're writing the same story, but Armand is following one character. I'm following another. He's doing the even number chapters on his page. I'm doing the odd number on mine. And we're writing it in a way that, like, if someone just subscribes to one page they can follow along uh but if they're subscribed to both and they can follow both and the first like several chapters are free so we're yeah, right. using that to advertise but we're kind of experimenting to see what uh what we can do with that what's the link yeah yeah what, what's your patreon? Uh, what's the pitch on it patreon.com no the pitch uh, armand resmelia <laughs> and yours mine is uh patreon.com slash jay wilburn nice and simple cool what's what's the pitch on the story 
Uh, we got a we got a married couple that are seem to be splitting up at the beginning of the story. So they 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 haven't actually appeared in the same scene yet, um, although they're kind of crossing each other's paths occasionally. So they'll see the aftermath of one or the other. And um, we got three chapters out, so I can go ahead and tell the the part that's happened so far. These portals appear to be opening up in town, and then these like uh, s- these creatures are coming out of the portals and tearing the town apart and all that kind of stuff. So they're kind of trying to figure out where each other are. Um, where they are in the relationship and just trying to survive all these uh, heinous monsters that are coming from some other dimension. Where do you come up with this shit? <laughs> the well, you should have seen the rejected the idea. <laughs> we, we, we had an idea that was like this huge, giant thing, and we were like, this is so complicated. Let's, <laughs> let's think of something else. We, it, Dumb it, it down a bit. It, yeah. it had portals, it had two worlds, and it was this convoluted mess. Uh, yeah. I still might so do something the with it, but it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was unmanageable at the point that we got it. <laughs> it would have been a doorstopper book. <laughs> <laughs> and what's good is, again, we're doing, Jay wrote the first chapter, and he mentions the husband in it. But then I write the second chapter from the husband's point of view, and it's, you know, like right from the beginning, you, you're, they're, they're both totally different. She's gone. And he's still there, and he thinks she's gone for different reasons. And it's 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 the the characters are what really brought me in because they're they're nice and unique, and they're um, you know trying trying to go through. And it's really cool to just be able to just randomly create these crazy cat you know <laughs> creatures. You know, oh, I'm gonna write a giant flying uh, Cthulhu type of thing with tentacles. Let's write that and see it rip people apart. You know, or you know, just uh, so that's a lot of fun of it too. And then to read Jay's parts, and then play off of that. So, like in one part, he, his character, she talks about meatloaf. So then in my chapter, my character is like, well, it's Tuesday and it's meatloaf night. You know, because he's a very regimented wow. character. And and what was really cool is then my wife came home and I was like, Shelly, can you make meatloaf this week? Because <laughs> Jay mentioned meatloaf and now I want meatloaf. So she made meatloaf for for us the next night. So it's like anything Jay uh, food to adds. Too, yeah, yeah. Anything Jay adds, then uh, then I eat. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, you're getting so in the headspace of the characters. What you're doing? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. No, he's he's not hungry. Yeah. No, no, but he's <laughs> there. Of course, he's gonna eat meatloaf. I'm just or I'm just fat. One of those. <laughs> good food is good. Funko pops are I good. Food. food are good too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at the Funkos behind you right now. I know. With Jay, Jay's got a Funko. Jay's got a Funko. <laughs> yeah, I got ones over there. People, people started have buying me those months. for Christmas. Armand was one. My wife was another. So I ended up with a, a bunch of Stephen King ones. And I finally was t- said, everybody, okay, everybody stop. All right, I'm not doing this. This is not, yeah, this is not going to be my thing. I'm not getting in left. this world. We just, I just got a bun. I just got like uh, 15 more in like the last week or two. <laughs> That's because you subscribe. I, I, I pre-ordered, like I'm waiting. I, I actually should have gotten the, uh, did you see the ACDC one, the Highway to Hell yes. one? That yes. one should be, should be here oh, today. Oh, the album cover one? Yeah. yeah. That one should be here today or tomorrow. I want to get the, the Scarlet Witch. MCU ones from the I just uh, want the uh, Scarlet Witch big ones. just because she looks cool and uh, Agatha because it was Agatha all along you guys been watching any movies TV shows I picked up I watched the Army of the Dead one that just came out on Netflix yep, I finally here. got to that I, did, God, I had to I'm pick sorry. an hour that my kids were asleep uh, um, oh, it was great I'm uh, glad you I thought it was great Skip <laughs> I enjoyed it I'm glad you enjoyed it. We had this discussion. <laughs> I uh, I like coming to things late uh, because I I hear all the like negative hype and it makes everything good for me. Because like once people have talked down something enough, I get to it and I'm like, well, that wasn't a piece of shit. I, that was fine. Right, and so like I I actually enjoy something I probably wouldn't have enjoyed otherwise. So I appreciate you guys online shitting on everything. That's that's <laughs> nice for me. Yeah. I, you know, here's the thing. I started watching the movie and I loved that opening credit sequence. This is great. Mm-hmm. This is great. Yeah. And then my wife says, I got to go to bed. It's 10, well, it's 1130. I said, what do you mean? I paused the movie and there's still an hour left to go. I said, what the hell? Is it still dragging? <laughs> it going? It's a goddamn Energizer uh-huh. Bunny. Is Zack Snyder movie? It's going. 
So yeah, we, we haven't even bothered to finish watching it. So 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 your problem <laughs> is that it it it's it's length and girthiness. He doesn't have a long game. He's got no long game. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves in the older age. I did see a Quiet Place Part Two. Okay, um, I, I, um, I, I braved, I braved the the, you know, the tail end of this pandemic, and I went to the movie theater. Um, I, I love how they've got you know social distancing in the theaters. You know, you got to have two seats between you and everybody else. Um, that's really cool. So, um, the movie was fantastic. I thought. Um, Krasinski did a good follow-up to um, the other film and has set it up as the second of uh, at least three films. Um, you know how the last one ended abruptly? Mm-hmm. This yep. one ends abruptly as well. Um, it's going to pop right into the story as it continues on. Um, but it focuses on the, on the girl. It focuses on the, his, on the daughter and her trying to, and growing as a character. And it's, it's, a good, it's a good focus. It's a good character to focus on. Emily Blunt's, okay. you know, the the side the side plot. Um, she, uh, um, Millie, our, our yeah, Mill- Millicent, is the uh, Regan of the character is the uh, the focus in this story. So it's a really good family story, um, and and it made me think too about how important it is for a story to have likable characters, and a good story with the characters. It's not the monster. It's the story with the characters that you're really telling. And they did that good in here. So let me ask you guys, how do you approach that with the stories that you tell? What do you do to ensure that the people story is as interesting as the supernatural aspect of what you're writing? Uh, sometimes it's subtle. Like, obviously, there's th- there's techniques you use to make somebody seem down to earth and techniques you use to, to make them have motivation and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes what really connects us to the character is the smallest, smallest thing. Um, so I remember reading, I was, I did a lot of beta reading for friends at one point. And I remember there's this one section where the, um, the father's flipping off the light for the kids and has just this moment where connected to the light switch, where he, he just, he wonders if he's a good father, flips off the light, walks out. And I remember telling the guy, don't, whatever editing you do, don't take that piece out. That's it. That's, that's the subtle piece that makes us connect to this guy and feel everything he's feeling. So even mm. if you're writing a shitty, unlikable character, if you can give them like a moment of like weakness or humility or humanity, and it, it's something just very, very subtle where you can hate the guy, but still kind of feel like, Oh shit. I kind of, I felt that way before kind of thing. And it, it's um, obviously you need all the big stuff, but I think if, if you don't have any of those little things in there, then you just kind of have an emotional theme as opposed to, to like a, a real character that you kind of feel in your bones. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, it's the, um, for me, it's the emotion of the character. Like, you know, like Jason, you, you, you don't want a one dimensional good guy or a bad guy. And you want that connection. You know, we, we, in, in going back to retail, we always talked about ownership. You know, your employees need to feel like they are part owner of this business, whatever crappy business I'm working in at the time. And, yeah. and they, and for me, I, I kind of look at that the same with my writing. I want a reader to find something in that character that they can connect with, that they're like, okay, how would I do this? How would I, you know, do this? And that was like for Dying Days, that was Darlene. I didn't want her to be this superhuman woman, you know, shooting zombies and killing zombies through the series. I wanted her to be a normal person. And a lot of people connected with that. And I think that's why you know, that series still sells really well because it's not that superhuman female running around kicking ass. It's, it's, it could be anybody. Right. Yeah. An every man. You made an every man. Right. Yeah. That connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I've run into that problem too. I've just learned it actually. I, I, I had the epiphany recently. <laughs> <laughs> so as a result, my, my fiction's changed. Um, because now there's more character, there's more right. story between the characters, there's more there's more relationship building, um, between characters and and conflict too, and that helps you have conflict. And as we know, conflict drives a story. That's what tells your story. Right. Ah, music time. It's music <laughs> time, guys. Yes. 
Did All you right. hear about Vince Neil? Ramon, did you hear about Vince Neil? <laughs> that awful uh, show in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man. Did you just watch the video? It's it's yeah. It's hard to. It's really hard to. Like you, I feel bad. It's a I, could watch, I read the article. I could watch the videos. Oh, it's it's, it's like awful. oh my god. He's Dude. been having bad shows for years though, hadn't he? Yeah, what did he, he do? Now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one was really bad. Yeah. yeah. Like really, like he walked off. And basically, he's like. You know, girls, girls, it's like, I, I basically, I, I can't even do this anymore. My voice is shot. Yeah. Poor imagine, guy. Rocky, imagine Rocky goes in to fight Apollo Creed the second time and trips on the ropes and breaks his nose. Hey, you you all motherfuckers yes. bust yes. on my ass for not liking early Molly Crew. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought he was shitty from the beginning? Go fuck yourselves, <laughs> all right? It's Helter Skelter was the first one he started forgetting the words for in the, on the, on yeah, the set, he had to read. The, he was oh. reading the lyrics on the on the ground. They put him on the floor for Poor bastard. Because That's what they have fucking... teleprompters for, Vince. Well, no, his <laughs> band, his solo band, can't afford those. <laughs> so That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. We need a harpsichord player over here. No, we don't need lyrics over there. Can I get a glockenspiel? <laughs> Jay, what kind of music you put into your? Do you listen to, or do you use for inspiration? All right, so, like, knowing that there was music involved here, I am the absolute worst guest for you to have on this show. <laughs> so let me let me just run you through a timeline right. of my musical taste. Uh, in the early '80s, I was into like pop music, so I liked Aha, and then I liked glam metal, and then I got into Christian metal for a while, okay. and then I was into grunge, and then I was into like the death of alternative for a pretty long time. And now I'm kind of back to pop music. So like, there you go. I, I don't I don't have any real musical identity or. Um, you you have to drive in a car with Jay, <laughs> and put on random stations, and Jay will sing the first like three lines of every song, no matter what you <laughs> sure. put on. He's in the he's in the back he's in the back seat just singing, but only like the first that three like a, three or four. I, I imagine Jay in the back seat going, "Welcome to Prairie Home Companion." <laughs> <laughs> I, I got all kinds of like. Uh, mental issues in my brain and stuff from damage and, and medication that I'm on and stuff. So like I'll get, I'll get fixated on something in my head. Like I'll get a song caught in my head for months mm -hmm. and it's always kind of there ready to come out. I've almost lost friends at some of these conventions when people are driving me. Cause like, I won't even realize I'm doing it. I'll just sit there and like every five to 10 minutes, I'll just sing the same few words from, the, from a particular yeah. song. Take and your daughter it, to the slaughter. And then, it's over, and then it comes out again. <laughs> And it's some sometimes that's become like the theme of conventions for some people because they've heard me do it so many times, almost like I'm their theme music or something. I'm so glad "Wet Ass Pussy" is a song right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because so, you need to hear it at a convention. <laughs> that's I'll that. start practicing. Oh, that's Jay, he's so pretty. Right. He's so pretty. Swish, swish. Went the pussy. <laughs> And of course, oh. we're talking about cats. We're talking about cats. <laughs> how's how's the metal been since you got married, Armand? I still listen to the same stuff. So my wife is a big. Uh, the thing we have in common is uh, '80s music, and okay. so I'll put on like we're in the car, and I'll put on like Hair Nation, and so she knows like Poison. She knows Motley Crue. She knows all those. So, uh, and she's learned a lot more, which is always funny because the song will come on and she'll immediately turn it off. Like she knows if. If Rush or Deep Purple comes on, turn it off. I ain't listen to that crap. Uh, I'm done. But, Rush is amazing in small doses. <laughs> but uh, and so it, and it's so it, it's like we we have kind of that little bit of common ground. But most of the day I'm here by myself, so I'm blasting, you know, whatever I I want. And we get in the car and she listens to. She's from down here. She listens to country music. That's what she grew up on. Mm -hmm. So okay. so it's kind of like she turns the country music off, but then I won't put on. I won't put on like you know Cannibal Corpse or or Slayer or anything like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of how we work it. But there's enough bands in the middle there. You know, uh, a couple of years ago we went to uh, before the pandemic, obviously when we were because we go to the casinos in Biloxi, and uh, she was like, you know, we always see the bands that are playing because we get free tickets and everything. And she was laughed. She's like. I know we're going. I'll get the tickets. I'm like, what? She's like White Snake, and I'm like, fuck yeah, we're going to see White. I'm like, I haven't seen White Snake <laughs> since 1988. And it was just funny. And she's like, I don't know White Snake. I said, Yes, you do. You know. Yeah. And like every song, she would go, Oh, I know this song. Oh, wait, I know this song. Oh, wait a minute. This is them. So it was yeah. like funny because, like, you know, half the set she knew. 
Dun 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 dun. Funny that you mentioned White Snake because we haven't had an opportunity on the Necrocast Town yet to talk about the passing of Tony Katane. Dude, and we had there is we our had eulogy. You died when I was here. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. Every time I, mean, I come out, somebody dies. This is we supposed to be his, his his out, his way out of fucking death. Uh, you are the we Grim Reaper we, of podcasting. We started this. We were like, wait a minute. There's nobody de- who died that we could talk to Armand about. Don't yes, I there is. <laughs> now, here's some inside information. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, we met Tawny a couple of years ago, and all of yep. us actually con- convened at the Necrocasticon at a Scaricon convention. And Tawny told us that her first boyfriend was Bobby Blitz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see that in the... Uh, From Rat, yeah. I'm trying to think of what, what movie they're... they're uh, one of those... Uh... Rise and Fall of Western Civilization. Yeah. Part well, that's her, that's her legs on the Rat EP and on the first, on the, uh, first album. That's her on the album. Yeah. Tawny Katane <laughs> is the perfect metal and horror mascot for the Necrocasticon because of Witchboard mm-hmm. and because of White Snake. And because of her life is horror. So you... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, the, all the crazy horrific. shit she did to, yes. to everybody. Yeah. 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 yeah but, she, but look, she was like the... Everybody wrote songs about her. So you got to realize that all those L.A. songs about women were all about Tawny. Every fucking last one of them was like I, I, I swear to God she was with she was like the 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 poster girl for you're supposed to look like this for the women back in that era. Well, I don't think Cherry Pie was written about her. No, no, <laughs> no. nor was she was only seventeen. That was those were written about Jay Wilburn, obviously. <laughs> that was quite an influence. I was the corny <laughs> love of my day, I think. Jay is so such a. He's too sexy for the story. <laughs> yeah, she uh, told us that they were still working on a new Witchboard movie. Um, and that was, what, eight years ago now? Uh, um, yeah. Seven years ago she told me that. So I guess that's not going to happen again. Yeah, they weren't working too hard, apparently. And evidently, <laughs> yeah. They probably couldn't get Eric Roberts to clear up his time to come and be on it. Because, um, you know, he's in all those B-movies. And he shows up in a, a major motion picture every now and then as a bad guy. Well, he plays a great bad guy. He plays a great mobster. He really does. He really does. Speaking of mobsters, Armand writes a lot of stuff about mobsters now. That's your that's your that's your New Jersey roots. Yeah, that's a lot of the, that's a lot of the uh, the Jersey. So in my uh, crime thriller series, I have what's called the family, which is the Jersey mob. And a lot of it is uh, based on people that uh, you grew up with and and all that, family members and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. a lot of wise guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> End of conversation. Let's move on. In fact, in fact, delete this whole part. <laughs> no mind. Do not come after us. <laughs> Little Frankie. I know your mother and she'd love you forever if you killed me, but don't do it. You told you, Chappy, shut up. Don't, you ain't got nothing. Get the gun, get the cannolis. This is Jay. Yeah. How you been, man? I'm doing all right. That's good. <laughs> Hanging in there. Yeah, you got, that's all right. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Ah. <sighs> Seer sucker motherfucker. How the fuck do you come up with a name like that? <laughs> uh, Sean Grigsby um, got a seer sucker suit. He's a, like a, um, I don't know if you guys know him well. He's a he's a sci fi writer, uh, and he he just captioned the picture seer sucker motherfucker. And I actually I actually messaged him and said, "Do you mind if I use that for a story?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead." And so I I just I just took the title and like made this over the top Tarantino esque like southern family feud uh that turned you know turned bloody and and came to an end it came out under ten thousand words so it was technically a, a short story and then i only released it in a um short story collection that i i published only on my website i didn't even have it on amazon and so i sold it at conventions and i sold it from my website and then it got nominated for a splatterpunk award 
And so like I can literally count how many copies went out. So it's not like, oh, well, you know, maybe it went wider than I thought. No, I know exactly how many copies went out because I had it. It was micro published. So somewhere along the way, enough of those people liked it that it, it became a thing. So now I have Sears Sucker Motherfucker <laughs> in my bio, you know, <laughs> along, along with children's books and Matter of Faith podcast and all that other stuff. too. <laughs> Just with the brand. You got that over on Godless. Yes. So I, I put it exclusive over there. It did really well. Yeah. Um, it, That's it, cool, it, man. it got a lot of money off of it over there. I, I love that site. I, I'm going back and editing old things to see what I can put on there. And Yeah, we're going to uh, do a little thing. We are. We've, uh, we're going to create a, a, a non plume that's going to be us as a team writing. Oh, okay, cool. And it's yep. uh, basically going to be a over-the-top wrestling federation. So yes. at some point, Armand, we will be reaching out to you to be a contributor in this. I'm doing uh, something very similar as well. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, but it's for, yours for NSFW. Yeah, not, not a wrestling one, but, uh, oh, oh. but uh, oh, we're doing our just... Same. Well, maybe. Who knows? We're basically doing an over-the-top uh, uh, beers and fears. The guys we all did: uh, Tim Meyer, Chuck Boot, and Frank Edler. And then we're bringing J.C. Walsh in. We're uh, going to throw something together, a bunch of related short stories that are a little bit more extreme than we normally do for uh, a Godless exclusive. Oh, that'd be cool. So yeah. uh, J.C. will write an extreme cosmic horror story. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. And Frank will like will write like a a bizarro, crazy, God only knows what he's even talking about story. So it'll be good. Well, he's been writing <laughs> a lot more horror lately. Um, yeah, he's really gotten. He's really, uh, you know, with Beers and Fears too. When he wrote the opening story for that, um, it wasn't the crazy stuff that I'm used to him doing. It was it was a lot more serious. He's gotten really, uh, really serious in the last couple of years about his, you know, the the craft of writing and understanding what uh, what he's doing and everything so i'm uh, i'm really happy with with everything frank's been doing especially lately yeah i love frank he's a great guy um he doesn't he doesn't like you he said he doesn't like it when i when he loses his magic so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> people you know how people are scott you know those yeah, <laughs> 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 well Armand Rose, Amelia, and Jay Wilburn, thank you very much for joining us on the Necrocasticon this week. Yes. Thank you guys. Oh, thanks for having us. Looking forward to the work. Looking yes. forward to more. Yes, and uh, pimp your pimp your wares. Pimp your wares. Tell you us. Go first, Armand. You can go, Jay. All right. Uh, well, I'm on uh, twitch.tv slash Jay Wilburn, so you can see me write new stories for you every day over there. Um, I got a couple things over on Godless, including Seersucker Motherfucker and uh, 10... Christmases and Sleepy Hollow. Um, I got the Vampire Christ series out, and uh, you just look up Jay Wilburn and buy whatever you find, I guess. You can find me at ArmandRosemilia.com. Uh, I'm very active on Twitter still, Armand Author, and um, also got a couple of uh, short stories exclusives on Godless, and I'll have more stuff on Godless. In fact, me and Frank Edler are releasing the Shocker trilogy as exclusive ebooks oh, on nice. uh, on there, and we figure that nice. that fits that fits really Very well. Nice. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. We're selling. We've sold more in the first week on there than we did like probably the entire time it was on Amazon. So wow. we found really? we definitely oh. found the the crowd that uh, that is into that, which is really cool. See, it's all about finding audience. the audience, and Drew's done yeah. that. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. So, and uh, we just I just had United States of Apocalypse two came out. Me and Mark Tufo. We went to on audiobook, it went to number one on uh, on the release day, number one new release, which is cool. And I'll have Dirty Deeds nine uh, comes out June fifteenth. Yeah, cool. Sounds great, man. Any more baseball stuff? <laughs> no, I'm loving going to baseball games again. In a uh, couple weeks, they open up 100 percent full capacity for the uh, for the game, so uh, we're excited. Yeah, my cool. wife and I have said we're going to start going to the Mets games down here in Syracuse. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's next America's, next year they'll, pastime. They'll, yeah, next year they'll open it up and we'll play more teams. So we'll we'll get to travel more and go uh, follow the team around and stuff. Which oh, cool. oh, if you get to travel and they come to Syracuse, bam! Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not coming there. Yeah. No. Yeah. You don't want <laughs> to. I've been, I've, I've been to place love comes to die. I went to Syracuse in the past. I'm not doing that. Again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One time was enough. <laughs> he has his 30 day chip. <laughs> All right, guys, on, thank you guys. very much. 
Uh, we will talk to you Thank again you. soon. And Jay, Appreciate I'll see it. you at Scares the Care. Yes, sir. All right, boys. There we go. Woohoo! <sighs> good times. Good times. Yeah. All righty, Scotty. So yeah, that's that's about it. Oh, oh, Lost Lorne. Before we go, Lost Lorne. Um, Mark Ron Hagen's uh, combination horror D and D game setting. Um, that Skiff's gonna be actually he doesn't realize, it, but he's gonna be playing in it soon. <gasps> oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the Kickstarter's starting soon for it, and it yep. Scott. Vampire mm-hmm. Pirates. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant idea. New it's market to tap. That's yeah. that well, is brilliant. That's one of the characters. That's one of the character types. Um, basically, it's uh, an A island. Vampire. Sh- <laughs> Think of the island from Lost, for example. Remember the TV mm-hmm. show Lost? Yeah. Yeah. You heard about it? it was an island that shifted through to space yep. and time. Yep. Well, think of an island that shifts through the multiverse. To space and time. Okay, um, look at it. And say like yeah. as, as a mar as a as a Marvel type. Yeah. In that aspect, mm-hmm. um, and once you are on this island, you can't leave the island, like in Lost, and you're trapped in this 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 world that travels through the multiverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's a pretty unique game setting. Um, and it combines the best aspects of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons with the best mm-hmm. aspects of uh, World of Darkness storytelling. Mm. Brilliant. Um, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And Mark Ryan Hagen is the guy behind it. And uh, 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 we've talked about it on the show before. So you yeah, at least know that much about it. Yes. Yeah, we've had him on the show. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's Mr. Scott's over on YouTube. Yes, uh, it's Mr. Scott is everywhere. You find me on YouTube, you find me on Twitch, you find me on Twitter, you find me on Instagram, you find me on TikTok, even though I don't do much on TikTok, but I'm there. And uh, recently, I did open a, my first It's Mr. Scott merchandise store. It is now fully available. Uh, you can find the link on my YouTube channel and on my Twitter page. I've sold a couple t-shirts. I sold a t-shirt in Japan, guys. Someone in Japan bought one of my t-shirts. I think it was Muko. No. no, I know who it was. It, was it wasn't Muko? Uh, was it the bass player yeah. from that band that follows us? Nope, was okay. not them. Okay. But uh, yeah, so that uh, that recently happened, and I'm very appreciative and grateful for that. Recently hit my two-year anniversary on YouTube as well, so looking forward to more stuff. We've got album reviews and more reactions and other stuff working on as well. So find me on all that social media. You also find me on the Shadow Cult podcast, where you can find me, Thrashmanac99, a.k.a. Levi McIntyre, our good buddy Walter Ball, and James from We Are Pro Wrestling. Every week we do a live uh, podcast on YouTube where we talk professional wrestling. We either re, uh, review a pay-per-view or talk about a subject. We just did a subject. Top 10 favorite wrestlers who were uh, on the microphone. Yeah, did, well, see, uh, that's the one that I should be joining you guys for because I could give you input on that one. I bet five bucks you and I would have like the same list. Yeah, I'm sure we would. <laughs> yeah. D- Dusty Rhodes, Steve Austin, uh, Superstar Rock. Billy Graham, uh, The Rock, Roddy Piper, Mick yep. Foley, Ric Flair, uh, Hulk Hogan, the, the uh, Brain. Uh, couldn't do couldn't do managers. It was only wrestlers. Oh, no managers. But but, but it was manager. You know, Brain be at the top. Oh, Brain and Brain followed yeah. by Heyman. Yeah. Or it, yeah. Oh, or yeah, tied. Exactly. And, then, and then Cornette. And then yeah. so forth, but uh, yeah. So that was a that was a lot of fun combination. We we all give uh, our top tens, then we make a collaborative top ten together. You know, and uh, yeah, it was a lot a lot of fun. Unfortunately, Walter couldn't join us for that one, but uh, more top tens are coming. Top ten baby faces, top ten heels, top ten tag wrestlers, all that stuff coming in the future. So the Shadow Cult, find us on YouTube as well, please. And that's K V L T. That's how you're supposed to spell it. <laughs> mm-hmm. In a heinous manner. In a very heinous manner. More coming soon. Oh, yeah. Joey LaRock. Joey LaRock Files. <laughs> Skip, we're also on uh, uh, Necrocast Copper Sense. You've got to be kidding. But we yes, we conspiracy are. Conspiracy theories. we got some episodes coming up this month with uh, my friend Metal Bob, Bob Staffa. Oh, that was great. I love that list. Those, those are, are good, fucking brilliant. Yeah, those are some great shows. And, uh, of course, if you can buy my books over at thomasrclark.com, go buy my books. The God Provides. Coming out in July. <laughs> Watch for the God provides. Yeah, there's a, there'll be a commercial for it at I'm the end of this. I'm reading it now. I'm reading it now. Watch for the God provides. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's my subtle way of saying I'm liking it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm liking it. Can I say this is the most fun I've ever had writing a book? 
I can really? tell. Exactly. I can tell yeah. with this book. I can tell you had fun writing this. Yeah, and I can't wait to go back and visit that family again. So they're not going away. Also, I'm going to let you guys know now. Um, the new issue of Stranger Than Friction is coming out, and um, my story Giants is going to be in that magazine. Giants is a prequel to the God Provides. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. It God, features way back with this mythology. That's it really features cool. a character mm-hmm. from the God Provides in it, and the Cardiff Giant. You've all heard of the Cardiff Giant, right? You haven't? Heard yes, of the I have. Giant? Yep. Google it's it's friend. Like the statue. Six foot three or something. Uh, the Cardiff Giant, <laughs> no, was, uh, was a conspiracy. Cardiff, that would be a giant. <laughs> that we talked about on our show. The guy, the, 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 the giant man that was found buried in the earth down in Cardiff, New York, which is uh, 20 minutes south of me. Yep. So, well, anyway. there. It's coming out in July forget, from uh, St. Rooster Books. Our, our other, don't forget our other brothers, uh, Walter Ball. You find him on Twitter at your Walt Ball and on Instagram at smoking underscore, underscore Walt underscore Ball. Yep. And our good friend Dan Roberts, Sergeant Fury. He's on that Sergeant Fury on Twitter and Instagram and does other podcasting as well. I want to say Turnbuckle Top Radio, yeah, but I'm not Turnbuckle sure if he does that Talk anymore. Radio and and uh, uh, he's on Twitch as well. I forget. I, it might be Turnbuckle Talk Radio that's on Twitch. Mental health. He has mental, mental health. health. Uh, mental yeah. health and uh, Films of Fury, which I don't know if he's done a recent uh, episode or not, but it's always still something that he does. So we yeah. promote anything that Dan well, does. I guess his studio is being rebuilt as we speak. So we'll yes. So going to be more good stuff coming from the Sarge. Um, also, uh, stay tuned after the credits for a very special video from Brad. Yes, very good. And also, it is, magic June from Brad. it is June 1st, so we want to send a happy Pride Month to all the LGBTQ plus community out there, all our friends and family who are part of that community. We love you and we support you. Yes. Horns up, bitches. Horns up, yes. Horns up. She's just my sister. That's right. Yep. Friends and family, yeah, right. you're with us. We're with you. We're your allies. We got your back. Right, Not so in that way. Chapter Not in that of way. the next <laughs> cast con is... Hello. The Necrocasticon is written and produced by Thomas R. Clark, Scott Groverston, Walter Ball, Daniel Roberts, and Skip Novak. All content copyright 2021. Music by Daniel Edenfield, used with permission. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network.